Young man, you too can become a hero. I love that part of the show. Heroes have been around in stories for as long as there have been stories. One of the first pieces of fiction ever written was the epic of Gilgamesh about the hero, Gilgamesh. And lately, stories about heroes have risen to prominence again, both in the East and West, and many of these stories are about the question of what being a hero truly means. So today, I want to talk to you about Boku no Hero's answer to this question. And to help me explore this answer, I am joined by my friend Crimson Assassin. Hi, hello, people of Rising Sun Reviews channel. Says I once more, the Crimson Assassin, here today to give you guys a video to talk about My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia has a lot of morals to it, and one of the biggest morals about My Hero Academia, and a lot, the thing that you know makes it so charming and so just one of the best animes out there so far. It's the concept and topic of what it means to be a true hero. So let's get into Boku no Hero's answer because this is one of the reasons I love the show. There are stories about every hero, how they became great. Most have one thing in common. Their bodies moved before they had a chance to think, almost on their own. So, as we see here, the courage to rush into danger to rescue someone is what makes a hero. All throughout the story, it was built up that heroes are great because of their power. But the one who ended up saving the day was Deku, who had no power. And this was because he was the only one willing to rush into the battle, despite being more afraid than anyone else there. And I love this message, that is the courage to make a difference, not some superpower that makes someone a hero. And the thing about Deku is that when he had his moment of heroism, he had given up on his dream of becoming a hero. He wasn't thinking about being a hero, but just his desire to see Bakugo, and that was so much a part of him that he didn't think, he just moved into action. This is really inspiring and, well, it's inspired me as well. This message applies a lot to the real world. Think of donating blood as one example. It's something that a lot of people can do, even if it takes overcoming a fear. And even if you're not afraid of needles, it's still not a pleasant experience. But it makes a difference to people, even if it's only in a small way. Another aspect of Deku rushing into Seibakugo is how he inspired All Might into action as well. Sometimes the act of heroism is inspiring others who can make a more direct difference in the world. And in the real world, one person can only do so much. But through inspiring others, one person can have a far greater impact than they ever could on their own. So that's it. Courage is what makes someone a hero, either through directly helping those in need or inspiring others into action. So thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. Except that's only one small part about what it means to be a hero. A fundamental part, yes, and nothing else matters without it, but this is still only the start. What I love about Boku no Hero is that it is constantly adding on to its answer to this question through the way it tells its story. And it's not like it just bashes you on the head with it either, but it lets the message come across through the story and through the things that the characters learn along the way. Look at that line again, you can be a hero. The meaning isn't that Deku is a hero at this point, but his courage proves that he has the capability to become one. There are heroic things a person can do with courage alone. That is definitely true, but there is so much more that can be done when you have more than courage. Earlier on in episode 2, All Might talked about how some villains couldn't be defeated without power, and this is true. For all the courage a person may have without the actual capability to make a difference, that courage just doesn't do much. The fights that Deku won, he couldn't have without his abilities. Without his quirk, he couldn't have been able to land the blows on Stain, couldn't have broken out of Shisuo's mind control, and he could not have defeated All Might during the final exam. And once again, this applies to the real world as well. If someone stops breathing and then someone saves them by doing CPR, that person is definitely a hero. But they only could have saved the person if they had the ability to do CPR. There may not be superpowers in our world, but there are abilities people can learn and practice that allow them to make a difference in the world. For example, doctors are heroes when they save a person's life, but this is something that took many years of education and training to be able to do so. Another part of the answer from the show comes from All Might. Actually, a lot of this comes from All Might in one way or another, but for this example, I'm talking about the battle between All Might and Nomu. During the fight, he talks about how a true hero will always find a way for justice to prevail, and this shows the determination that a hero needs to have. All Might knows that he is at his limit, even beyond it, but he keeps pushing beyond anyway, proving that dedication is important to being a hero, and this is a trait that both Deku and All Might embody. 
Then going back to episode 5, when they have the initial testing at UA where Deku is going to use all his power to propel the ball, even at the cost of his arm. However, Aizawa stops him, tells him that he cannot be a hero with that power. What is striking here is that these are the same words that Deku had heard only a few episodes before. None can deny his courage or dedication, though this scene proves that this alone is not enough. He has to have the wisdom to properly apply his power that his courage and dedication have given him. Throughout the battles up through the UA festival, Deku was really limited in what he could do without destroying his body. He had to figure out how to best use his power he had in each fight, whether it was an all-out smash to end the fight quickly, or fight in various ways that didn't require his quirk. And even after he was able to control his power, he was still limited to only using 5% of it without backlash, so he had to be wise with what he did and when he decided to push himself further. Then there's a battle between Todoroki and Deku, which, well, there is just so much to talk about here. Seriously, I think this is one of the best episodes in all of anime just because of how it nailed so many different things. But in this episode, we see two different things that make someone a hero. A lesson from Deku and a lesson from Todoroki. Todoroki's example of what makes one a hero is quite obvious because the show tells it to us, but I still think it is an important one worth discussing here. It's about how a hero is willing to use every resource they have to make a difference. Todoroki's firepower is from his father, who he justifiably hates but the power is his to do with what he wants. He is likely the strongest person in his class when going all out, and he could do a lot of good in the world with his powers, but that is only if he is willing to use them. And then we see this in the final round, the doubt and guilt hold him back, and this is the reason he lost to Bakugo in that final battle. And then there's a lesson about how to be a hero from Deku here, and it was a little bit more subtle, but it's been in there since the beginning, and that's Deku's mindset of wanting to save the people in front of him, no matter what. This was seen at the beginning of the show with Deku protecting another kid from Bakugo, then again in episode 2 with him rushing to save Bakugo, or in episode 4 when he attacked the robot to save Uraraka, and then in this battle, uh, reaching out to save Todoroki from himself. In these moments, he doesn't consciously choose to save him. It is just something that he does because, well, to him, there is no other option. Someone is in danger, so Deku has to save them. And while Deku's desire to save Todoroki might have cost him the fight, he was able to accomplish something much greater than simply winning the battle. And I will let Crimson Assassin go into this a bit more with the role of Deku and All Might in being heroes. Part of... My Hero Academia's charm is definitely his, you know, over abundance of him just wanting to help people just because. And, you know, that's what we all love Izuku about. He follows the standards of, you know, just wanting to help people just because. He doesn't do it for fame, he doesn't do it for the money, he just does it because he wants to help people. That's basically what Izuku is all about. And, you know, he def definitely, and I feel like that's why he really looks up to All Might because All Might is a character who you know, a symbol of hope, a symbol of peace, and he, you know, looks up to All Might because he's a true hero, and that's why there's no other, there's no hero above All Might, that's why All Might is who he is, All Might is just the greatest hero ever made. So that's the basics of what it means to be a hero according to My Hero Academia. You have to have courage, be determined, develop your powers, be wise, and use all the power you have available to you, and then channel all this to save those in danger. But while striving to be a hero is an admirable goal, there's also danger associated with it. And so I want to end this video with a look at one of the most interesting characters of the show, at least from a thematic uh, perspective and this is Stain. Once again, I will let Crimson Assassin introduce this part. As I feel his philosophy, by the way, spoiler, his philosophy of what it means to be a true hero really resonates with me. The fact that how he sees other heroes as fakes and how there's no other, there's no other hero above all might and you know those who use their quirks for their own personal gains should either be killed or killed and that's what there's so many layers to stain that I can't really talk about, at least in this video, at least in Rising Sun's channel. The thing that makes Stain such a great villain is that he's correct. Even Ida admits it. Deku understands the ideal Stain is fighting for and a lot of the world admires him, or at least thinks he's cool. Stain is addressing a real problem in the world, those who act like heroes despite only being in it for themselves. But as a great philosopher of anime says, just because you are correct doesn't mean you're right. The actions of a hero aren't just about fighting for a righteous cause, but instead must be centered around helping others. Ida shows how quickly these ideals can be lost in a desire for revenge. If anything, in the battle between Stain and Ida, Stain is the hero. 
He's fighting to make the world a better place. Well, it is just fighting for revenge. And here, the shifting perspectives are what makes Stain so great. Even his name, Hero Killer, can be read in different ways. The most obvious one is that he's someone who kills heroes, but it could also be read as someone who kills who is also a hero, a heroic killer. And considering he lives up to most of the descriptions of a hero I've gone over, it's easy to see Stain as a hero, or at the very least, someone fighting for ideals that should be looked up to. So I hope you enjoyed this exploration of what it means to be a hero, and go check out Crimson Assassin's channel down in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.